Hello. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm here, in, in case anyone doesn't know, I'm, I'm here with, with Blake Mitchell from Hewick Studios. How are you? I'm doing really good. I've been traveling so much the past like week or so, so it's actually nice to have been kind of slowed down for the past day or two, and that's been really nice. Even though it's slowed down in West Hollywood, which probably isn't right. really that slowed <laughs> down, <laughs> but... Um, I'm doing good. Yeah, we're, we are in WeHo. What do you think of, of WeHo uh, compared to um, Kentucky? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's like, it's not even comparing apples and oranges. It's like comparing apples and broccoli. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just totally two different things, you know, like this, you know, like apartments here are probably, you know, like I pay $1,100 a month and have a three bedroom house in Kentucky and $1,100 a month would get me what, like? 300 square feet here. yeah maybe maybe a studio if maybe. you're maybe really lucky yeah <laughs> it was like a half bath <laughs> yeah that's like that's yeah you have so, a tw room for a twin bed yeah exactly so it's really uh the the the, the cost difference is, is huge and i choose to live in kentucky because i travel so much that paying really really high rent for a place that i'm not even in that often just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me Exactly. Yeah. And then you were, you'd mentioned you were, uh, you stopped off in Palm Springs and you're, and you're working on some other stuff. Yeah. So I stopped off in Palm Springs, uh, to film some videos with, uh, my good friend and mentor Davey Wavy, mm -hmm. uh, who helped me start my YouTube channel, mine and my ex-boyfriend Casey Tanner's YouTube channel, Cake Date, a few years ago, back in 2015. And, um, I've just been feeling very inspired as a result of my experience and having been in the industry for as long as I have now. Uh, four years, things. right? Yeah, four years. Is uh, you know now I have like some experiences that I think uh, other people could learn something from, you know, and I kind of want to just share that with the world. I can't wait. That's gonna be great. I yeah. Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and and go back four years, I guess, going back to 2014 or yeah. maybe a little bit before. Uh, tell us how you. I know you started doing stuff on Let's Cam see. and and. So how did that, uh, how did that, how did the first cam show, what came into your head to do that? So, what what okay, led to that? So that story is crazy. So late 2013, I had broken up with this boyfriend that I had, um, and I was working at this 24 hour diner in Lexington, a place called Tolly Ho. And, um, what were you doing like, at the diner? So I did, uh, both frontline and backline and I kind of floated between the two. I was a very like versatile employee. Uh, uh -huh. and that's why they like really liked me. Um, and I really love that job. I, I, I mean, I'd work there again if it weren't because the money it was so bad. Like, right. you know, it, it's, it's just a diner. But <laughs> I loved that job. And uh, I met this guy there. Um, and he came up to me and we were just talking and we started hanging out. And then I went over to his house and uh, we got kind of drunk and made out or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And this is like like, a, like a November, December 2013. Mm -hmm. And um, one morning, the after we had like made out the night before and stuff, these three like hot naked chicks ran into the room screaming about how much money they'd made the night before. And I was like, so what do you guys do? You're like strippers? You know, like that's, that's uh -huh. like what came to mind, right? And they're right. like, no, 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 we're cam girls. And I was like, what's that? And they're like, virtual strippers? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and how much money did you make last night? And it was like in the thousands. Sure. A couple hours, you know? And, and, and I was like, uh, I kind of looked at my pants and I was like, I think I could <laughs> uh, and they're in you're in Kentucky, right? So, yeah, so there were cam girls in Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, there's cam girls like, and that's the thing about being a, a cam person is you don't have to be in Hollywood to do that, you right? Know? And you can do that right. in your house in Montana for fuck's sake if you have internet. Right. So, uh, so anyway, for like a month or so goes by, and I, I started talking to my friend. I was like, we should do this. We should do this because mm -hmm. like at that time I was like a really poor kid. I had I didn't have a computer. I didn't have a car. Barely had a phone. So you know, were you still living at home? Uh, no, I was living with this older gay couple okay. um, who were like my really, really, really close friends um, that I had actually met through my father. Okay. Um, but so um, fast forward like a month or so of kind of like goading him into doing it with me because uh -huh. he had a computer in an apartment that we could actually like do this in. You right, know I mean? right. So he's like, okay, okay, we'll get on. And we get on February 8th, 2014, I think was the first time I got on cam. February 2014 for sure. I, we got on cam and for, I, I don't know why, like, you know, I mean, I was literally a twink then, like so mm -hmm. small, probably like <laughs> 130 pounds, 135 pounds, didn't mm -hmm. even have my tattoo then, Okay. nothing, like, um, 
and uh, people really liked us. And I yeah. don't know why. I think it's because we'd only ever like made out before. So when people were seeing us do things together, like like blowjobs, and eventually like anal together, that was literally the first time that we get, were doing those things. Right. And I think people could see that, could see that realness, you know. Right. Because right. we weren't trying to oversell it. It just was what it was. So the first couple of camp shows, we made like almost ten thousand dollars. <laughs> And I'd never wow. made that kind of money before. You know what I mean? So so I was like, so of course, <laughs> like, you know, 19-year-old uh, me or 18-year-old me was uh -huh. stupid. And... Did you spend the money? Oh, yeah. I, just, I mean, I, like, spent so much of that money so, like, so foolishly. <laughs> I can't even tell you. you yeah, know, well, so, well, as any normal 18, 19-year-old. Well, you know, you give an 18-year-old yeah. $5,000, what are they going to do? You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, and that it, it kind of continued like that for several months. It was really, really successful. And then there just kind of started to be like some feelings there, and it got complicated or whatever. Mm -hmm. By that point, I had enough money. I bought my own computer, and I just broke off and started doing it by myself. Right. Later right. that year. Um, and what did you call yourself in that? Because oh gosh, um, it's for it's wrestler Blake. Okay, like, that makes Blake. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're always Blake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I picked I picked Blake Mitchell to become a cam star. Okay. Or okay. cam boy. Most right. <laughs> um, and then later that year, uh, I had dated somebody in high school who eventually became a Helix model. We kind of mm. reconnected because I had all this money, so I was just like anyone. We, anyone we would remember? Uh, Caleb Reese. He did two okay. scenes for Helix: one with Andy Taylor and one with Evan Parker. Okay. And um, and then didn't come back out. But uh, so I flew down to Florida to go see him, I, and this was right after he had filmed with Helix and had done some other stuff and then eventually he dropped off the map. But um, I flew down to see him and then Helix kind of found me from there. I think Casey saw that he and I were like posting pictures together on Twitter probably. Mm -hmm. And then Casey Roman from Helix Studios got in contact with me. I applied in September and then actually flew out for the first time in November. Mm -hmm. And November 2014, I filmed my first scene. November 2014, okay. And you had already been performing, in a sense, on, on your own camera, right. so it wasn't completely it wasn't. unfamiliar. It wasn't, you know. Um, it's funny. Who did I watch that with? I can't remember who I watched that with. Oh, yeah, yeah, with Davey. Uh, uh, one of the videos I did with Davey was watching my first porn scene, uh, which is okay. Take It From Blake with Andy Taylor. Uh -huh. um, and I was like... There was a lot of things I was doing that I was like, oh my God, like, oh, stop. Like, n like me now would never do those things. But, what, you know, those performance things, style yeah, or exactly, just. Exactly, like mm -hmm. just performance wise and like know how. And, and mm -hmm. so, you know, I could see that I was inexperienced, but I could see I was also, I was like, well, I wasn't as bad as, as I thought I kind of was before I watched this. Right. Do you watch your own stuff now still? I do. I do. Yeah. I watch it a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I really like to show people like the scenes that I really, really loved doing and really loved um, being a part of, like Flower mm -hmm. and Breathe mm -hmm. um, and uh, Lifeguards. Right, the I whole, all of Lifeguards, lifeguards. Yeah. yeah. I show people the Lifeguard scene with Joey all the time. Mm -hmm. I show people Flower all the time. Um, yeah, yeah, I watch it all the time because that's how I've gotten better, I think. Right. You know, is to be able to objectively view myself and say, okay, you're doing that wrong. You're doing, you could do that better. Mm -hmm. And this, that, and the other. And then I think that's how we, we improve ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Some people don't like to watch. I, I interviewed someone a yeah. few months, a few weeks ago, and they were like, "No, I, I can never watch. I can never watch." A lot of people can't. A lot of people can't yeah, and I mean, there's anyone. I think whether they're a, a movie star or you know someone working in Hollywood. I mean, there's they, I've heard actors and actresses that'll that'll say, "Oh, I don't watch my own movies, or I can't." So I'm like, I, how I, it's all over everywhere. How do you miss I know. it? How <laughs> do you not watch? Yeah, 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 yeah. With porn, it's a little easier to like just not watch them. You know? Right. And speaking of lifeguards and and everything that's happened since then, it's like the, it's been a year of awards for you one after another after another <laughs> um, were you surprised at that or yeah, I mean, yeah. shocked like at the straight up gay porn awards actually uh, I thought Diesel Washington was going to win best supporting actor I didn't mm, I had mm -hmm. no clue yeah so it was, was a tough category at my at the table with all the Helix guys sitting there like talking to Dennis and talking to Casey and they're announcing the awards and I'm not like 
I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna win this. I'm not gonna get And then they say Blake Mitchell, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and then you know, I have to walk up there, and I was like, I didn't think of anything to fucking say. It was good though. I, I just, think that was just totally spitballed. <laughs> yeah, it came off. It was it was to the point, and it was you thanked everyone that. Yeah, so it worked. And then you, um, and then you won three dips. The, the fans voted you as performer of the year this current year. Yeah. And that was, that was you really won nice. three, you, <laughs> and you won three Gavians or four Gavians, four Gavians. So it's been. Got snubbed at Cyber's Yeah. That's another story. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, I mean, all of that is, uh, and, or uh, not all of it, but a lot of it, a lot of those awards, um, were, some of them were, were based on, on fan votes and just people call, yeah. clicking and, and over and over again. A click, lot click, of click, them. Click, <laughs> click. A lot of them, yeah. So, the other thing that, that was really, that was really sort of funny and and that happened speaking of of trump and social media um last year you made all these headlines because you had anthony scaramucci, scaramucci following you the, the white house communications director the shortest lived the, white the, house communi director, quick. communications he director quick director in and out um you just noticed that one day and so i the only reason i noticed was because it got announced that he was hired as the white house communications director People were talking all this shit about him and all the all the things, you know, it, like they were doing with all the Trump people. It's like, this is their resume and how awful they are. So uh, it was like hashtag Scaramucci was trending or whatever. So I put that. <laughs> I ended up on his profile just to see what was up, and it was like follows you. <laughs> I said, literally, I mean, what I said in the screenshot. Wait, what? That's like literally what I yeah. felt. I was like, huh? And I mean, the guy's following like what? At the time, it was like eighty thousand people. Sure. But if you, if you if you went through it, he's, he was following a lot of yeah. like young LGBT people, like Teresa yeah. Vaughn, um, <laughs> Shawn Mendes. Well, I don't know right. if he's gay, but I think he know. was following a couple other uh, performers too, like Max he was, Carter. He and, was following, and, and he's started he's followed more. Mm -hmm. And some people were saying it was probably just like he just follows high engaging accounts, you know? Sure, but, or maybe an intern of his yeah. clicked. But <laughs> it just seems to me, you know, and then and then and then where it almost went really big and got kind of scary for me for a second was when he got fired and his wife divorced him the same day that oh, it started yeah. like growing that, that right, he was right, following right. me. And I was like, oh, my God, what if his wife found out that he's gay and now she's divorced him and I've just <laughs> caused all, oh, my were God. There, were like, there other don't let that be the case. <laughs> were there other people asking you about it? I know I asked you about it. Yeah, were there other media actually, outlets asking um, you about it? Uh, um... Different sites and things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the New York Post asked me to verify. Okay. Uh, that it was real, <laughs> um, and uh, and I did. But then, but then something way bigger happened right after he got fired. That, oh, like, took the in the news cycle. Yeah, and, and so they that like died off or whatever, which I was happy for because it was. Right. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> but I didn't think I, I do think I gained like ten thousand followers in like a week sure. from that shit. <laughs> Having covered the porn industry for almost ten years now, um, sexuality is is, and sexual identity is has always been sort of used in a in this sort of marketing way when when porn is done. And so, and for you in particular, I think I think I've learned I have learned a lot from you and watching you and and how you've handled yourself and and presented yourself. And and I mean that in the sense that. When I first started covering the industry, um, people's sexual identity, performer sexual identity, was always uh, a question: Are they gay? Are they straight? Are they yeah. gay for pay? Are they bisexual? And so, a lot of times, someone would say a performer might say they're bisexual, and then it would come out later that you know after they retire they're or something they'll say I'm straight, and then I'll become really defensive and I'm married with kids and I'm straight. And so then there's there was some negative sort of negative perception of someone saying they're bisexual because they're not believed or well, something and and the difference being with you is that you're a real person you're authentic and 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 you are bisexual and i think you've helped me to be more like accepting. respectful and accepting and understanding of yes this is a real this is real We're this real is real people. life i'm here right now um, <laughs> and i know that sounds so naive of me but i think it's just because in the porn industry, the way identity is, has been marketed, it's like it makes everyone skeptical of things. But you are real, and obviously, and I wonder if if what kind of just in in general like challenges that you may have faced or or misconceptions you may have faced. Um, well, I don't know if you've seen on Twitter recently some of the accounts that are like tweeting me, uh, tweeting pictures of me and stuff, and and saying like, oh, he's actually straight. Don't follow him. Mm -hmm. And it's and. These pages, these Twitter pages, are about like this, like 
it almost reminds me of like this like, this, like Nazi racial purity <laughs> thing, honestly, yeah. where they're like, there's like, I only want gay men in my gay zone. It's like you've yeah. been jerking off to Sean Cody for fucking years. Yeah. Like, let's yeah. not sit here and pretend like they don't. Right. Right. You know, and so. You know, how do you like, handle it? Do you do you do you do you blow it off? Do you some, just not pay attention to sometimes it? Sometimes I engage if it's if it's so blatant and it's just like, you know, it's like oh my god, like I, people are gonna like believe this. You know what I mean? Mm, like if I don't, yeah, rebut right, it, like, right. You know, so uh, so I rebut it pretty vehemently because mm. to me it's that's who I am. That's my identity. You know, and my brand. Yeah. And it would be like if a straight person said that you can't be gay, told me that I couldn't be gay. Yeah. It's no different than like, a gay person telling you you can't you know, be bi. And the well, and the, the the thing about who's doing that is it's almost exclusively straight white or not straight white men, uh, <laughs> like cis white gays. Right. At least that's what their Twitter profile Seriously. looks like. You never know who. Well, you but, never know, but but, but a yeah. lot of them do identify themselves that way and 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 present themselves that way. And so it seems like for a lot of people in the community, the B in LGBT mm -hmm. is silent. It is. It really is. But I think you, um, and not to, you know, put you, <laughs> not to like put too much pressure on, on what you're doing or, 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 or how you present yourself, but I think you, um, oh, have made a difference. Proud. You have made it, <laughs> no, you have made a difference. And I mean, it just speaking for myself, you made a difference in the way that I, you know, um, My perceive, perceive things. No, no, exactly. The problem is, exactly. For a long time in our society, that was acceptable. Right. As you were saying earlier, you know, for years people used bisexuality as this like bridge mm -hmm. to come out. It's how that was like a little safer. That's the whole way, like you mentioned, Sean Cody, all and not just Sean Cody, but all of the studios. I mean, they all yeah. have anytime it's a gay, it's a it's a straight guy who might be open. Yeah. And so they, so it's been muddied the the yeah. muddied waters. And but you uh, again, I think um, you're helping to change that. And, and so so yeah. thank you. Well, I, <laughs> I don't know if I should be thanked for that, honestly. I think, you know, uh, like I said, it's a bit of a responsibility to be true to yourself and, and be true to other bisexual men, especially. Mm -hmm. Because I have found that society finds it very believable for a woman to be bisexual. Sure. She's very attractive. Sure. Um, but for a man to be bisexual, he must be a, um, a gay guy who just doesn't want to like admit, just doesn't want the, the gay label or whatever. And right. I have no problem with the gay label. You know, yeah. if I was gay, I would tell people I was gay. But yeah. I came out as bisexual when I was 15 years old. Or actually, I got outed. Um, but I got outed at 15 as a bisexual. And How did that for happen? Almost, um, Go ahead. 10 years, I've been saying that I'm bisexual. You know, so it's like, yeah. I've never switched it up. I've never ever <laughs> called myself gay. You're not evolving to something yeah, else. Yeah, right. It's like, and you're, you are, yeah. So, um, being outed, do you want yeah, to... Yeah, how did, how, how did that happen? <sighs> Without going into anything you don't okay, want to... Okay, so sophomore year of high school, um, I started going to public school for the first time, actually. I'd never, like, been to public school before. And you were in private school? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and so I went to public school for the first time, and it was like, you know, my, the, 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 I was class of 2013, um... Like the class of 2013 at this public high school was bigger than my whole previous school, so I'm suddenly like thrown into this like ocean of people that I've really just never of like, oh, this is like a lot of people, you know, like these class sizes are like there's 35, 40 people in here, you know what I mean? I'm used to like 15, 20 people and having a much more kind of like uh, intimate experience and like you know everybody at the school and you know everybody really well and you know people's families know each other and then when you go to public school it's like you're just you know, a, a wash in people. So um, I made the mistake of trusting people. And mm. um, uh, I actually met my very first openly gay person that mm. year. Yeah, I had never met an openly gay person before in my life. <sighs> until was, you was, were 15. Yeah, until I was 15. That's probably... That's probably sure. for some I think. People, I think. Right? Well, I mean, that was my experience. I think probably. Yeah. Okay. But this was a long time ago yeah. before people were out. And, right. Yeah. And, and this is in Kentucky. Right. right. <laughs> so, and so he was at school with you. Yeah, he was at school with me, and we met. And I, and I remember, uh, apparently, it was like really obvious because he was like, you know, had the really effeminate voice, and I'd met people like that, but never who were like openly and saying like I'm gay, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I met him, and and he was, you know, and I was like, you're gay. To tell people like you know I could I really couldn't believe it you know right. coming from Kentucky in like this tiny town of less than ten thousand people like uh -huh. 
No, I was like totally like was like what? You tell people like do people know? It's like yeah. Ah. So you know I started talking to him and, and this was like 2012, 2013. You said? Yeah, this okay. is 2010. Okay. Yeah, 2010, and um, so I came out to him that mm -hmm. I was bisexual, mm -hmm. and um, but then being bisexual, I was kind of like also talking to this girl at the same time uh -huh. and uh the boy got mad i guess that i didn't like pick him uh. and so but i told him i was like you know if we date then yeah i'll come out and whatever but like if we don't then i'm not like really ready for that i don't you know mm -hmm. that's that's like beyond my current boundaries at the sure. time uh so i started dating her and he started walking around the schools of the hallway Telling everybody that I was bisexual or that I was gay, I, he told different people different things. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, and then of course, you know, Kentucky Public School, and he was like one of two openly gay people at that school. Now mm -hmm. I'm the third, mm -hmm. without any like decision or permission or anything. It, it's in the, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that you was had my experience to. With coming out. So it was sort of just thrust upon you. You didn't have a choice. About yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like. Well, now you're bisexual, and then that's when it's like, oh, so you're really just gay. You just have it. Sure. So life. that must that's, that so, really started then. Yeah. So it's been since. Yeah, and I'm sure that's what a lot of most people go through. And I've been fighting it every day since. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think things. Hopefully, things are getting better, and and I think. Well, I hope so. Yeah. If you if you if you weren't performing in porn and 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 being Blake Mitchell, uh, what would be an alternative job? Or jobs, or or career, or life that you might be oh, needing. <laughs> I think about this all the time. Me too. That's why. I, that's and I was I like, you know, because my plan was up until public school, which kind of like changed my whole aspect and outlook on life. Like, I would, it, you know, my life was like decided for me up to that point. Um, and uh, it was like, yep, you're gonna go. You're gonna go to like Stanford. You're gonna go get a business degree, and then you're gonna work at Chase, and you're gonna work your way up. You know be one of the executives and like that was my plan kind of mm -hmm. you know and then I look back and I'm like Jesus Christ I'm glad I didn't do that because <laughs> I think I would have been so unsatisfied with my life um, in this job I get to I get to share part of myself that a lot of people never share you know what I mean like the almost intimate parts of ourselves are exposed and, and offered basically for sale um, which is an experience that a lot of people can't relate to and don't understand, which is why I think we have the stigmas about porn. You know, mm -hmm. uh, people don't want to talk about it. They want to watch porn and then turn it off. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, but I think now, like if I were to retire now and just like leave the internet, like delete all my social media and like go like do a normal life. Like, Cause you, yeah, you could do it. I mean, you can do anything you want. Right. right? Uh, I probably still would go get a business degree. Um, But I'm not sure what I would, you know, I, I want to start a business, but I'm not exactly sure. Like, the cannabis business is really intriguing me. The which you know, business? The cannabis business. The oh, cannabis of course, yeah, here really in California. Me. I mean, but all over, the whole West Coast now has legal. Legal, yeah. yeah is Washington, it legal in Nevada, too? Yeah, Washington, Oregon, California, and Nevada. Uh -huh. all have it. And Colorado now, so it's like, it's just... Oh, sure. Yeah, and yeah. Arizona, New Mexico, don't they? I don't know, I know Colorado does. Yeah. Yeah. So you you took a, a little bit of a hiatus from hiatus from from filming, and yeah, it was a, last year from like July all the way through December. And so, would you say now that you're more back on a regular schedule of filming, or still um, kind of dipping your toes back in, or uh, so, that smile <laughs> like you're so, hiding something? <laughs> um, I had some things going on in my life that I couldn't film for that time. Okay, um, but I didn't want to lose my contract with Helix and I obviously wanted to keep my job, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. um, so I, I kind of explained to them and I was like, look, you know, I'm not going to be filming for anybody else, but I just really can't film right now. You know, can we keep me under exclusive contract and not just like terminate it? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and they were like, uh, yeah, but mm -hmm. that means you like the way it worked out is like you kind of like, um, you owe us three scenes, you know? Okay. And, uh, so the one in January with Cole, was the first one, the one that I just filmed in the second that one. That just came out, and yeah. there'll be one more okay. Blake Mitchell scene. And then after that, it's going to be a very, um, for me at least, it'll probably be kind of rare. Okay. You know? um, and uh, on like a scene-to-scene -to -scene basis. Okay. 
is that just because you're going to be focusing on other things? And yeah, well, you know, I've I've moved up in in the company and started working kind of like for corporate, as okay. you know, as they say. So, um, uh, you know, filming takes time, and 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 maintaining your body and maintaining everything that's involved with filming takes a lot of work and effort. Um, right. So, and it kind of takes up a lot of like mental and emotional bandwidth that. I think I, I would be better focused elsewhere, especially mm -hmm. now doing producing for Helix and things. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's why I've decided to just scale it back and not make it, that's my main job, you know? Right, right, okay. Uh, what might be something about you that no one knows that they'd be surprised to learn about you? Yeah. Without giving away anything that you don't want to give yeah, away. Right. <laughs> but is there something that's fun that maybe you, you, you like that you don't mind giving away that, that mm -hmm. would be a surprise or, or a fun surprise to someone? Um, like, what do you do? Uh, I can make it more specific. What do you do more? Like, back in Kentucky, on a, on a typical Blake Mitchell day, you, you wake up and you're not working and, and you're not doing anything. What, what oh, do you I really, do? I really, um, uh, I think a lot of people already do know this. Um, but sometimes I just spend hours driving my car, just driving around like wasting gas and, <laughs> and stuff. Uh, and that's like that's like my happy place. Like I'll leave my, I mean I have my phone in the car and mm -hmm. I'm using it for music or whatever. But I completely just like turn it on it's a little silent and just drive around for hours. And that's just my peaceful, happy like cocoon. Sure. Um, and you worked hard for that car. I mean, it's it's been a it's been a long time coming. Just wait till I. Which one I get this year? <laughs> oh, you're gonna you're gonna have a, another car mm -hmm. coming. Okay, all right. Oh, the other thing I wanted to ask is, is, and I think I may have asked you this already, but people always I see people always asking or, or maybe commenting, and if you don't have your glasses on, are you 100 percent like do you have to have them all the time? Do you want to try them on? Um, yeah, let me try them on and see what happens. Because like what I've noticed is when other people wear my glasses, what they're seeing through the glasses is kind of what it's like for me without to not be wearing them. Okay. All right, you can react to what I'm. I can't. You can't even see me. You can't see me right now. Okay, I cannot see anything. You are. Yeah, you're a blur. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Everything is. Um, Everything's just a blur. It's a blur. Yeah, it's like I'm in one of those yeah. funhouse funhouse mirrors. <laughs> you're but, in the mirror. <laughs> but yeah, but I'm looking at it from reverse. Okay. Yeah. My and power so, is negative twelve. Okay, and then do you have con you have contacts? I've seen I you have without. contacts. Yeah. yeah, I just haven't ordered a new box yet. <laughs> so, um. well, um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk. I know you're busy, and I know you've got a million things. Well, was, what are you doing tonight? You're going back to Vegas. Yeah, I have to drive all the way back to Vegas from LA. It's about four or five hours, and then, um, and then I fly back to uh, Philadelphia, where my car got stuck because of the snowstorm. Oh. I drive from Philadelphia in my car back to Kentucky. Is it's your like car at an airport hours. lot somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> By the day. Uh, like, All right. Well, it's your favorite place to be, right? Exactly. So. That 10 hours is my happy place. That's peace. Okay. Well, um, we will talk soon, and we will okay. be watching you soon. And Thanks again. Thank you so much for coming out all the way to West Hollywood. I know. You know, I know the drive <laughs> is always terrible. It's, it's, it's always worth it for you. Oh, so thank you. Have Bye. a good one. Bye.